John chapter 20 verse 19 onwards. We are reading the same gospel these days. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. My dear friends, now what is happening here? The glamour, the grandeur, the glory, the presence of the risen Lord should be something very glorious, you know. Taking the sun and turning the moon and squeezing and taking, you know, something, something like that. Come on. Oh, he is coming, you know, shabbily dressed, shabbily dressed and showing his sides and hands and all the wounds and cars, cars. Come on, what is this? I mean, is that the proper way of manifesting the risen power of Jesus? Something wrong somewhere. Of course, in the worldly way of power, we're looking at things. The world will show the power by dominating, by stepping, another, stepping on another person, crushing the person. You know, that, that kind of domination, sublimation, you know. So that's how you, you, you show your power. But then remember, if you, if, you, if you look down upon a person, if you control a person, if you crush a person, or submerge, you know, uh, make, make, make that person, uh, you know, a slave, it will happen that table can turn topsy-turvy. You know, that can one day happen to you also. But then, the Lord's way of dealing things is different. He's showing his wounds. His wounds. I mean, after the resurrection, after opening the limbo, you know, the, the, the place, all of them were shut. The doors were shut. The heavenly doors were shut until the Lord was risen. After the moment he's resurrected, he went to the limbo and proclaimed the good news and opened the doors of heaven. All, you know, all the church fathers, everyone who was in the Old Testament, they entered heaven. And what a glorious, glamorous situation. But now still, his wounds remain the same. His wounds remain the same. He never erased their wounds. Of course, there were, it says, according to Shroud, it, it, it has, he had about more than 5,000 wounds in his body. I mean, in that way, no skin at all. So it's complete, com he's, he's a wound. So among the wounds, he had this side, hands, legs, these five straw wounds. Even Father Pio, he says he has the wound in the shoulder as a stigmata. My dear friends, so wound. Think about your wound. What about Jesus' wounds? He came and showed them their, his wounds. I mean, the word says, when he had said this, he showed them his wounds and his sight. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Wounded Lord. Wounded Lord. They were so scared. They were so glad to see the wounded Lord. Because they identify their wounds with the wound of the Lord. That's our hope. That should be our hope. So in, Gen in, in the book of Numbers, chapter 21, when the serpents attacked the Israelites in the wilderness, the Lord asked them to have a pole, a stick, and put a bronze serpent on it, and look at the serpent, they were healed. So they looked at the serpent. The, I mean, it related to their wound. A serpent, you know, the venomous serpent bit them, and now they see the serpent in the pole. So it's a connection. So here, here they find the Lord with the wounds. Of course, they are, they, are, they, have, they are terribly wounded within their hearts. Within their hearts. Now they see the Lord. Though they are so glad. Because the Lord is saying, my child, there is meaning in their wound, in your wound. Because I still live with my wound. And wound. It's a blessing. 
My dear friends, think about your own wounds. It can be a childhood. It can be a toddler. You can be an infant when you are wounded. The, 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 medically, it is, they have proved if a mother aborts a child and then the, the wall of the uterus or, or the womb would have, the second child would be rejected by the walls of the womb. So they are wounded there. When you, when as a little infant, you know, a fertilized egg, you know, when you are simply 46 chromosomes, one cell, all the parents, the, if the parents have planned, planned to destroy you, you are wounded. They wanted a daughter and you are a son, or they wanted a son and you are a daughter, you are wounded. You are terribly wounded. So as, 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 as you are born, of course, you are wounded. In the school, you are wounded. In your relationships, you are wounded. That's how you are wounded. The, the, these so wounds are so negative for us. The, the, you hate the wounds. And top of it, you hate the people who wounded you, inflict that pain on you. You hate them or you're scared of them. Now it's high time. The moment, moment you deal with the person whom, who wounded you, I mean, you, you, you don't get the real meaning of your own wound. Jesus never dealt with the people whom they, whom, who wounded them, him personally. Now he's showing his hands, side. Who pierced them? All the Roman soldiers. One is Longimus. All the Roman soldiers. But then he never dealt with the messenger. If you can remember the seven words of the cross. When he was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. He dealt with the Father. That's how your wound would have power in your journey. Don't deal with the people who wounded you. The moment you, it can be a two-way thing. You can be self-pity. You are suffering from self-pity. I mean, you are, once you are self-pity, uh, you are with self-pity, you think, why, Ane, come on, why this thing has happened to me? Why? The moment you see, moment, and, the, and it can be anger. Where you hit the person, angry with the person. I want to, you know, I want to revenge that person. You have wounded me. You keep the harbor that grudge in your mind. No, it won't help your wound. The moment you deal with your wound, there is meaning in your journey. And if you have that hope, because Jesus gave them hope, not by erasing all the wounds, by showing them the wounds. There's meaning in your suffering. There's meaning in your pain. So you read Romans chapter, Romans chapter 3, Romans chapter 5, verse 3. It is beautifully said how, how you go through the struggle and the meaning of the struggle in your life. Words goes like this. More than that, we rejoice in our suffering. Knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance pro pro produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. The moment you are clothed with the Holy Spirit, the whole entire gamut of the picture would change. You won't be, st you won't be stuck in that particular stigma, particular a segment of the plan. You will see the entire gamut and you begin to praise the Lord. And rather you begin to praise the people who wounded you because in a way they have blessed you to open that door because of their rejection. Paul and the new Christian community went to another land. And the Lord said there would, there won't be, there would be enough land, enough cities for you to go before my second coming. So it's a blessing in disguise. Unless he or she has wounded you, you will never realize your pride is gone with the wound. St. Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 7 verse 12, uh, 12 onwards, chapter 12 verse 12, 7 onwards says, my pride is remedied with a thorn in my flesh. So that's the power of the wound. So think about your life and the, how you are wounded. Look at the recent Lord, still the, he has wounds. You know, Wound is something, something related to the death. That's the last enemy that we have to destroy. Jesus has destroyed them all. So once there is a villa, 
was Teresa of Avila was praying, Jesus appeared to her and spoke to her. And she was so glad. And then only she realized that that, that ima image of Jesus did not have scars in his heart, heart and side and legs. Then she asked, where are your wounds? Then to see, it was a mess to see that it's the, it's, it was devil who has come in this guise of Jesus, figure of Jesus. So wounds are so precious. Don't ever, uh, don't ever waste the power of your wound. There's, it has a witnessing value. It has a witnessing value. You can be all life can be a life of cocoa garden, a cushy posh life, without any struggle like a, like a bed of rose. No, no. It's a it's a difficult thing. You want your coffee, you will wish that, but then the struggles that you go through. The pain that you go through, the agony, the trauma, the torment in your heart will give you a different meaning. Different meaning, my dear friends. If you hold on in hope, don't ever lose hope in your journey. Jesus is giving them hope by showing them the wounds. One saint beautifully says, when Jesus went to the father and father asked him, son, where are your wounds? Think about two friends who are invited for a party uh, a precious birthday party. One, of course, one party, this particular friend got the vehicle and uh, nice, nicely dressed, went to the party and he was enjoying. The other person, he, he met with an accident and then he could not start his vehicle any longer. So he tried to repair it and with all the dirt, you know, and grease and majang and everything, you know, so his, uh, his shirt is torn and trousers is torn. With all this difficulty, he just she's limping me coming to the party. And the friend opened the door. And the friend opened the door and sees this person shabbily and bro, I know dirty. He still hugged him and said, I'm, your, your coming is so precious. Think about that person nicely dressed. Of course, there is love. But then this particular person who is wounded, you know, broken, torn, there's more love in that. So if the Lord asks you at the end of this tenure of the here, this life, son, where are your wounds? Where are daughter, where are your wounds? You should have with proud, with pride, you can show him your wounds. Father, these are the wounds. These are my, my scars. Because I had to say yes to you, the world damaged me. Because I have to give my consent, the Lord rejected me. I'm so, it was so painful. But then read Beatitudes, Matthew chapter 8, and see, the Matthew chapter, chapter 5, and see how the Lord, your tears would be, uh, would be a blessing, your pain would be a blessing, because there is meaning in your wound. Have that hope always. Think about it. Amen. May God bless you. Mm -hmm.